Okay, so in this project, we're going to be building um, a dad joke application where it gives us a joke. So I ate a clock yesterday. It was so time consuming. They're just silly little jokes and we can click a button to get a new joke and we can keep getting new jokes. And where we're getting this from is actually a third party API at I can has dad joke dot com. And if you go to that URL slash API, you can see basically the documentation for this API. And we're going to use the fetch API that's built into the browser to make a request and get an object with an ID, a joke and a status. And we're going to take that joke and we're going to put it into our application here. All right. So I'm going to actually have a, a section in this project where I strictly go over HTTP request and response, how that works, as well as how the fetch API works. And then, you know, after we build out the interface with HTML and CSS, we'll add our JavaScript. I'm going to show you how we can use fetch normally and how we can also use it with something called a sync await, because when you deal with fetch, you deal with something called promises, um, which we'll get into as well. All right. So let's get started. Okay, so like I said, in this project, we're going to get into working with the fetch API, making an HTTP request to a third party API that gives us dad jokes. But before we get into any of that, I just want to create the the HTML and CSS, which isn't going to be too much. So we can probably get we can get the, all that done in this video. So let's go ahead and change the title here to dad jokes. And there's not going to be much here. We're going to have a container that wraps in H3 and in this H3 we'll say don't laugh challenge and let's have a, a div here with an ID of joke and then I'm going to give it a class of joke for styling. So basically this is where the joke is going to go. I'll just put a you know what we'll just do this joke goes here. And that's going to be replaced once, you know, once we make the request and we're able to put the joke into the DOM and then we want a button to get another joke. So let's create a button here and let's give this an ID of joke BTN and then we'll give this a class of BTN for styling and say get another joke. Okay, so we'll save that doesn't look too good. So we're going to jump into our style sheet here and let's see. Let's give the body a background color. So background color is going to be six, eight, six D E zero. That's going to be our background, which is a blue. And let's see, we want to leave all this stuff center, center. Good. And then our container that wraps around everything. I'm going to set that background color to white. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save that. Um, some other things we want to add to this container is a border radius so we can give it some rounded corners. Let's do 10 pixels and I'm going to add box shadow. I'm going to add two shadows, which I'm actually just going to paste in here. Or yeah, two shadows. We have this first one here. So zero 10 pixel um, for the offsets, 20 pixel blur color and this one here. So if we save that, you can see we have rounded corners and we have a bit of a shadow. Now we need some padding to take all the content away from the, the edges there. So let's do 50 on the top and bottom, 20 on the left and right. And then let's align everything text align to the center. And let's set a max width to 100%. And I'm going to set the width to 800 pixels. And let's actually add a little bit of padding on the body just so we have some space on the side on these small screens. So I'll say padding 20 pixels. All right. Now for the content in the container, let's do the H3. So H3, I'm going to set the margin to zero and I'm also going to give it an opacity of 0.5 just to kind of give it that transparent look. And I'm going to set letter spacing to two pixels. OK, 
Okay, now for the joke, so we have the class of joke, which right now just says joke, go, joke goes here, but this will be the joke that we fetch from the API. So I'm going to set this font size to be 30 pixels. And let's set the letter spacing. I'm going to set that to one pixel. And I'm going to set the line height to 40 pixels. And margin is going to be 50 on the top and bottom. And we'll say auto on the left and right. So it gives us plenty of room and give it a max width of 600 pixels. Okay, so that's the joke. Now, the last thing we have is the button. So that has a class of BTN. And I'm going to give that a background color. Let's say background color. And that's going to be hexadecimal number, which is going to be 9F68. E0. So purple color and border will be zero. And let's set the border radius on the button to 10 pixels. Okay, let's make the color white. Actually, I'll move that up there. And let's give this a box shadow as well, which I'm going to just copy. Okay, there we go. Now we obviously need some padding there and change the font size. So let's set for the padding. We'll do 14 top and bottom, 40 left and right. And let's up the font size, let's say 16 pixels. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's add it. Make sure the cursor is a pointer. And that should do it. So now we have our button. We want to get rid of that outline. So let's say BTN when it's in its focus state, we want the outline to be zero. So we don't have that ugly outline. And when it's active, when we click it, we'll just make it scale down a little bit. So let's say class button when it's active, meaning when we click and hold, we want to add a transform effect. And we're going to use scale and let's scale it from one to point nine eight. So it'll just go down a little bit like that. Okay, so that's good enough for the styling. In the next video, we're going to get into the fetch API. I'm going to talk a little bit about how that works. I know a lot of you guys already know this, but um, just for those that don't, it's important to understand at least the very basics about how fetch works and how HTTP requests work. All right, so this is the first project where we're actually dealing with working with a, a third party API using fetch to make an HTTP request. So I'm just going to go over a little bit of this before we get into the next video and write our JavaScript. So the API we're working with an API is just application programming interface. We're working with something called the JSON API. It serves JSON data, um, which is essentially like an like a JavaScript object. It looks like this. So curly braces. JSON does use double quotes on the keys and the values. Um, but you can see this is just an object with an ID, a joke and a status. So if we make an HTTP request, a get request to this particular URL, we should get something like this. Now, There's a few different formats. It, the default is going to be HTML and we don't want that. We want application slash JSON. So to get that, we actually have to send a header because when you send HTTP requests, you can send headers and we want to send a header of accept equal to application slash JSON. And there's there's many, many different ways to make requests. We're going to be using fetch within our application. You could even use curl, which is a, a terminal program. So Actually, I'll just show you real quick. Let me open up a new terminal here. And if I paste that in, so basically I'm just using curl to make a get request to this URL and I'm adding the header accept application slash JSON. And if I do that, you'll see I'll get that object with an ID, a joke and a status. And each call I make is going to be a different joke because they're random jokes. Okay, with a different ID. So another really nice tool to work with API's is Postman and you guys don't have to download this or anything. I just want to show you that I can make the same request. So I'm going to make get request to uh, I want to get rid of that to this URL 
And if I do that without adding the accept header value, I'm, I'm going to get HTML back. Okay, this is HTML. So I want JSON back. So I'm going to add in headers for a key. I'll say accept. And for a value, it's going to be application slash JSON. And if I send that, then I get JSON back. So I just get this simple object, just like you saw when I used curl. And as far as these methods, get just means you're getting data or getting something from the server post you typically use when you are submitting data so if you're submitting like a contact form or maybe you have an admin screen where you're where you're um, adding a new blog post or something that would be a post request put is used for updating data that's on the server same with patch and then delete is to delete data on the server and then these these down here you don't really have to worry about those are rarely used at least for this, you know, the stuff that I do. Um, so that's Postman and you can download it if you want. I think it's getpostman.com if you want to mess around with it. But what we want to do is make that request from our application. And the way we can do that is with using the fetch API. So the fetch API provides a JavaScript interface for a, a accessing and manipulating parts of the HTTP pipeline, such as requests and responses. And there's an example right here, and, and it doesn't have to be a third party API like we're using. It could be your own back end. So you could build an API with like Express, Node.js and Express or Python Django or PHP Laravel, whatever it might be. Or you can actually get just standard JSON files with fetch. It doesn't have to be some, you know, some complicated API now. When you call fetch to a URL, it returns a promise because it fetches the data asynchronously. So you have this dot then when the when it finishes and the fetch API is a little weird because you have two dot thens. the first one you get the response and then you say, well, I want the JSON data. So this is just an arrow function that we pass in and we're saying response dot JSON. And then we have another dot then because this returns a promise as well. And that gives us the actual data. So in this case, we would be logging the data that's in this movies.json file. So this is a get request by default. If you wanted to make like a post or put request, you would uh, you would pass in the URL just as we did above. But then you'd have this extra options value or object and you'd pass in the method that you want. So in this case, it's a post request. And if you were submitting form data, you would pass that in the body like If you had a registration form with the name, email, password, that stuff would all go in the body. Okay, and I'm not going to get too deep into this because what we're doing is pretty simple. So we're going to make a get request to get our joke, put it in our interface or in our, you know, in our application. I'm also going to show you afterwards how we can use a different syntax than um, this dot then. So there's something called a sync await, which makes it a little cleaner, at least in my opinion. And I think it's it seems to be, you know, the more popular thing to do when using promises is to use a sync await rather than dot then because this can get quite messy. Um, so we'll look into that as well. So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. We're going to be doing a few projects with, um, you know, dealing with API's, dealing with fetch. And there's also a library called Axios, which I actually prefer over fetch. But fetch is built into the browser. You don't have to add a CDN or install it or anything like that. All right. So in the next video, we'll go ahead and make our request to our API using fetch and put it into the application here. Get a joke. We'll also have this button make another request to get another joke. Okay, so now that I give you a, just a very brief overview of HTTP requests and response and the fetch API. We're going to go ahead and finish up our application here. So I have my script JS and first thing I want to do is bring in what I need from the DOM. So we have our joke. I'm just going to call this joke L for joke element and set this to document dot get element by D and that should have an ID of joke. Let's just make sure. So we're getting this div right here that wraps this text. So we're bringing that into our JavaScript. We also want the button. So let's say const joke btn equals document dot get element by D. And I think I used joke btn 
right here. So we're getting the button as well because we need an event listener on that. All right, so right when we come into this application, we want to call a function called generate joke. So that's going to get called. So we want to create that. So let's say function generate joke. And this is where we want to make our fetch request. Now, like I said, this is built into the browser. It's it's a, a native API, so we don't have to include any kind of CDN or anything. Um, and what we want to do is make a fetch request to a specific URL, which is going to be. Let's see, do I still have this browser window open? Um, yeah, so it's going to be to this. I can has dad joke dot com just like it tells us down here to make a request to. So let's paste that in there. Now, remember, if we just make a get request to this without the accept header of application slash Jason, it's going to give us HTML and that's not what we want. So we can add an, uh, an object here with a headers value. And headers is going to be an object and then we can put in for the key what what the header we want. Remember when we were in Postman. Did I close this? No. So when we were in Postman, I set a header of accept as the key and application slash JSON as the value. So we're doing the same thing here. We're saying accept as the key and setting uh, application slash JSON as the value. Okay. Now, usually what I like to do if I'm adding headers is or, or not even just headers, but anything in this object, I'll just take this and put it in a variable. So I'm going to cut this and I'll put it in a variable called config and right above it. I'll just say const config equals that object. I just think it's it's cleaner, um, but you can you know, of course, you can do what I just had here. Now, remember, this is going to give us a promise back. So we have to set this to dot then. And remember, with the fetch API, we get the response. You can call this whatever you want response. I usually call it res. And this is an arrow function. And we just want to call res dot Jason to get the Jason data. And then the second dot then is going to give us the actual data. Okay, so this is another arrow function. And for now, I'm just going to console log what data gives us and I'm going to save this. So this should run right away. So I'm going to open up my console and what we get is an object with an ID, a joke and a status, just like you saw with curl, just like you saw with Postman. It's all the same API. We're just hitting it with different methods, different um, technologies, you know, Postman, curl, fetch, whatever. So what do we actually want to do with this? We want to take the joke from this object and insert it here. So in this uh, arrow function right here, instead of console logging, let's open up a code block and let's take the joke element that we brought in above and set the inner HTML. Let's set that to not not just data because data is the entire object. We want data dot joke because we're accessing this dot joke from this entire object. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. And as soon as the page reloads, we see a joke here. And I mean, this isn't going to work yet because we haven't hooked it up, but we get my pet mouse Elvis died last night. He was caught in a trap. And if I reload the page, we'll get a different one because remember, every time you hit this API, it's going to give you a different joke. I used to work for a soft drink can crusher. It was so depressing. <laughs> oh God, these are so stupid. Um, but yeah, so now we're getting this joke in here. The next thing I want to do is just hook an event listener up to this button so that it calls generate joke again. So let's go up here and just say uh, joke button and we'll add an event listener onto it. And we want to listen for a click. And when that happens, we want to call generate joke. And as soon as I save that, we get a different joke because whenever we save, it's going to call this function. But also, if I click this button, it'll give us a new joke. All right. And you can check your network tab as well to see any requests that you get. I'm just going to dislocate this for a second. And if I just reload this, 
This is going to show you any files that were loaded, like our style sheet, our script JS. But if we look at so if we look at type, you see this fetch right here. This is it made a call to this URL. I can has dad joke dot com and we can see a few things. We see our response, which is the you know, the ID, the joke and the status. We can also check out the headers. So it was this is the request URL that was made. It was a get request. So that's the method. The status code was 200. Uh, what else? The remote address and then any headers down here. So there's response headers and there's also request headers. And in the request header, we should have this accept application JSON because we sent that. That was uh, you know, a result of what we sent within the options. And then there's a bunch of other stuff here as well. So whenever you need to see, you know, data that you get back when you make any kind of request, you can check it out in the network tab. Uh, so let's just attach, reattach this. So that's pretty much it. Our application is, is very small and simple, but it works and we are making a request to a third party API. Now, the next thing I want to show you is how to use a sync await, because personally, I don't like this dot then syntax. Uh, I think it looks kind of messy and we can make it look like it's synchronous when it's really asynchronous because we have to use this because this could happen, you know, um, while something else is happening. So the dot then basically says when this is finished, then do something. Um, so I'm going to actually comment. I'm going to copy this and comment this out because I want to just do it again with a sync away. Now, here where we make our request, I'm going to get rid of just everything here in the dot then. And what we can do is set for this fetch right here. I'll set a, a variable called res response, whatever you want to call it, and set it equal to, to the fetch. Now, remember, fetch is a sync, so we have to await until it's done fetching. So we use the await keyword. Now, whenever you use await inside of a function, you have to label that function a sync. Okay, that's why it's called the sync await. The function you label a sync, and then any promises that you want to put into a variable, uh, you're going to put this await before it. Now, this is going to give us, just like we have down here, it gives us the response, but we need to call this res.json. So what we would do in this case, using the fetch API, we could set another variable called data, and we could set that to res.json. However, this also returns a promise, so we have to await on that. And then the data will be in that variable. So again, we'll just go down here and I'm just going to copy this line. And I'm going to set that joke element in our HTML to data and then the joke value. All right, so I'm going to save that and you can see it works the same exact way. I think that this looks better and, and cleaner because instead of the dot thens, we're just basically setting what we get back from fetch into a regular variable. And then whatever we get back from res dot Jason into a variable, and then we can just continue on. We don't have to have this inside of a dot then. And it's all preference. Like I said, a sync await is very, very popular. You're probably going to see it more than not, at least in modern code. So definitely something to to understand. I mean, you don't have to use it if you prefer using dot then that's fine. Um, I'm just going to put a comment here and say, uh, we'll say using dot then here we'll say using sync await. Okay, so if both of them do the same exact thing. I'll keep both of them here for reference. All right, so that's it. Pretty simple project and we'll use this. This is kind of a foundation for any other projects that we use where we're making HTTP requests. Um, like I said, there's a library called Axios, which is is what I prefer to use because it's it's easier to use. You don't have to do the the two promise thing, the res dot Jason. Also, there's other things that you can do that are beyond the scope of projects in this course that I prefer. So we'll probably have a project using Axios later on. But that's it. Let's go ahead and get into the next one.